Hi everyone, my name is Emma Shields and I am now doing week two of a life skills workshop on communication, specifically professionalism. So I'm going to do a quick recap of what we went over last week. Last week we discussed our goals, um, we discussed the purpose of learning about communication and professionalism inside of the workplace. And in order to begin our brains learning and starting to grasp these concepts, uh, we went over a poem. And within this poem, I asked you guys to basically comment or write down whatever you felt comfortable with, um, what your interpretation was. And the purpose of this was to get your brains exercising to understand that although you may be looking at the exact same thing as another person, People have different ideas and they have different things that they take from it and different interpretations and this is what can really cause either miscommunication or the breakdown of a conversation. So it's great to be aware um, of what you are saying, now not to the point in which you are watching every single word being said, but understand clarity and what point you want to get across and how that could be taken by the other person. Now this week we're going to be discussing professionalism by definition, um, and also getting deeper into it by explaining what that actually looks like. We're going to be going over emails um, and how to professionally write an email um, by addressing, opening the email, and closing the email off. Uh, also, we're going to be looking at the difference in behaviors um, of pro professionalism Sorry, uh, between two different occupations. And we're going to specifically be looking at the lawyer versus the social worker. Which is very interesting because both do work with clients and both of those clients are emotional in their own sense. But it's a different way of handling them. So, let's begin. So professionalism is the conduct, behavior, and attitude of someone in a work or business environment. Professionalism leads to workplace success, a strong professional reputation, and a high level of work ethic and excellence. So let's break down what that actual definition means. So it means that behaviorally, you wanna show respect. That is the core of all professionalism, is respecting a difference of opinion respecting your workers for who they are, and respecting them even based on their position inside of the workplace. I always use um, this personal example when talking about respect. Um, so one of my first jobs, I ended up being basically the new girl in, and the other girls around me had had tons of experience, years of working in this place, and it was a lot of information to take in at once. And what ended up happening was because I was new and I was considered a nuisance because I didn't know all of this new information, um, although, sorry, new information to myself, but working in a very fast paced environment where there's a lot to take in, I was considered a nuisance because I held them back time wise. Um, I wasn't able to jump on and always help when needed um, because I didn't know how to do things quickly and I didn't have much experience. So there was that lack of respect between them where they made it very apparent that, oh, you know, the newer girl, she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know how to do this. She doesn't know how to do that. I have to take time to show her where this is and where that is. And it happens all too frequently inside of the workplace. So it's always important, even if you're easily caught up with that with coworkers, being able to step back and say, you know what, regardless of where they stand in the actual workplace um, or occupation, they still deserve respect. They're a human being, they have feelings and they have emotions. And respecting that really shows your employer that you have a high level of professionalism. You are able to work with whomever you are placed with. Uh, another aspect of professionalism that is so important is boundaries. Boundaries are key. Knowing when to say yes and when to decline and say no. 
Um, now, I, I'll always suggest if you are in that three month period of probation at your new workplace, try to say yes as frequently as possible when you're asked to do tasks. Now, you might not know how to exactly do those tasks, but this is a great opportunity to show that you are adaptable to new situations and that you are teachable and have great communication by asking your coworkers, you know, what are your thoughts or views on this? What is your insight into this? Or could you help me do this possibly? This shows great teamwork and great amount of professionalism while maintaining respect and boundaries with those around you. Um, now, the only time that I would say if you're in a probation period and you have to say no would be if your safety is compromised. Um, if you're in any trade and you are asked to do something that you know could put you at a high risk of being harmed or hurt, uh, don't, don't take it on. Um, if you are, let's say, an architect and you are used to a design that let's say is more vintage and you're asked to do a contemporary design and that's not your comfort level, say yes. This is a great opportunity to learn a new skill and be able to work on an area that's not a strength of yours. Um, so in that sense, know your boundary of saying, yes, I could do it. So I wanted to also touch on being teachable as well. This is so so crucial in professionalism. It's okay to admit, you know what, I have no clue how to do this, but I'm willing to learn. I want to know and could you please show me? This shows your employer that you're actually able to work your way up in the business, which is so important um, and so beneficial to you as an employee. So I'm going to get you guys to look at um, two videos and you could choose ones that are 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, whatever you would like. There's no time frame put on them. Um, but I would like you to watch an interaction between a client and a lawyer and then a client and a social worker. And if you could comment below our journal just like you did with the mindfulness activity last week, um, share your thoughts. What, what was the contrast between the two? Did you notice that there were similarities in the way that they conversed with their clients? Did they show consistent eye contact? Was there a position of seating where you noticed that they were equal to each other? Or was one person higher up and the other person was sitting lower? What are the little things that you noticed about the conversations? Did you notice any tenseness from the client or from the lawyer, from the social worker? And what did that look like? Um, I think it's so cool to look at different professionalism um, techniques and especially I love the occupation of lawyers, I must say, because they deal with very vulnerable individuals just as social workers do at times. And they have a different way of conveying professionalism though. They push boundaries. They um, are not as emotional sometimes as a social worker is. They're not going to sit there and have no views, no judgments. They're going to say, listen, this is how it is and this is what has to be done. And I think it's so interesting to see the difference and contrast between those two occupations. Um, so now, after doing this activity, please pause the video if you're going to take time to do that right now or take time after. Um, we're going to talk about professional emails. So this is so important when it comes to professionalism because these emails, if you've not met your employer, employees, or if you're contacting somebody completely different who's another professional, um, this is basically your way of asserting who you are. So the email is their first impression, first interpretation of who you are. So if you're sending a highly um, unclarified, unprofessional email, they're going to take you as you're not a very serious person in this matter. Um, so it's important to convey yourself in a certain manner over email. So I'm going to talk about how to basically start off that email or how to address an email. Um, when sending something professional, I mean, you can stick with your typical dear so-and-so. Um, 
but try to stray away from that um, unless you know it's just what you're comfortable with and just make sure that the actual body text um, and what you're trying to convey mes message wise is highly professional then kind of do a balance um, if you're not sure about who specifically you are addressing let's say it's a I have no idea a whole we'll use the lawyer a whole lawyers firm um, and you're trying to look for a lawyer but you don't know specifically whom you can say to whom it may concern and then in the body text clarify go into detail of exactly what you are looking for um, also with social workers let's say you're contacting the YMCA and you have no idea who you're specifically contacting but you want to get a hold of somebody in that area then to whom it may concern uh, so now we're gonna also start with how to open up I think the best way and really the only way that I start off most um, professional emails is by stating I am contacting you concerning so this statement opens up the ability for you to then explain in detail what you are actually contacting that person about what you are looking for and the desired outcome so a professional email and you can use good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as long as you have already met the individual and you have built a somewhat professional relationship with them. Um, so if I'm, let's say somebody's conversing with me, they would write, good evening, Ms. Shields, I'm contacting you concerning what we had discussed previously in the day. Um, I was unclarified with your point of and expand your thoughts so this just gives you a quick little nudge as to I'm contacting you concerning you're letting that person know right away you're not gonna send a whole email where they have to decipher exactly what your point is it is clear it is concise and it is straight to the point um, and that's very key in professionalism too you you want to be confident you want to say this is what I'm contacting you about and this is what I would like from it now in a polite way but still in a very straightforward manner um, and closing off you can say um, what I tend to do is I tend to thank that person for their time professional to professional although I'm not <laughs> considered professional at all but in a professional way thank you for taking the time um, thank you for your time and consideration. Um, I look forward to hearing back from you. Anything that lets that person know that you're anticipating a response back and that you value their response back. Um, and then closing and finishing off the actual email itself, you can write with regards, kindest regards. Um, you can just straightforward go right to putting your name. Um, where you work, your occupational title, uh, your email and phone number. This gives the individual all of the information needed for them to know who you essentially are um, and various ways of contacting which is also important. Um, so now we're going to kind of jump a little bit into um, reflection. So how as an individual do you feel that your professionalism has changed has have you maybe gathered more professionalism over the years have you decreased professionalism was there a change that might have happened within that time frame um, kind of just go into depth and give some insight into how you think that professionalism has changed